Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Lippert Hub and Drum Assembly for um, a electric brake setup on our fifth wheel trailer here. Um, now one thing that's going to set this kit apart is simply for ease of use. Uh, it, they're going to come pre-greased, which is really nice. The grease seal is going to be in the back of it already. The, um, the inner bearing is already going to be in there. That's going to be greased. The outer bearing will also be greased. Um, now you'll have to be careful when putting it on. They may, it may pop out, but that's no big deal. Uh, you definitely still have to put some grease on the spindle, but it takes all the headache out of having to pack the new bearings when you get them in a kit. This hub and drum assembly is gonna be made out of your typical iron that you're used to seeing on this type of brake setup. It'll have a very thick black finish on it to help resist against rust and corrosion over time. Now I will say that is going to depend on what kind of climate you're in. If you're in a primarily dry climate, you may not see much rust form, but if you're always traveling in rain or snow, um, this paint may wear away, uh, but that's just kind of how, just kind of how these are. They have so much abuse and heat um, that they have to take when traveling down the road. So it's just, it's hard for that paint to hang on. Um, the, they're going to have a half inch stud. There will be eight of them on six and a half centers. Uh, they're going to be rated for a 12 inch brake drum, or they will be for 12 inch brakes, um, your electric brakes. And they're going to be rated for 7,000 pound axles. That's up to 7,000 pound axles. If you're looking into changing out your brake pads or repacking your bearings, anything like that, um, the thing that is the most confusing and scary about electric drum brakes is that because the drum covers the brake pads up, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into when you take that drum off. I've taken drums off of electric brake setups before and the pads literally fell off. Um, so I definitely recommend um, being over prepared for uh, whatever you're getting into. And if you're looking at getting new drums, typically you're, ar you're already prepared, um, but like the setup we did here, we thought that our our drums would be okay when we took them off because this camper is only a 2018, um, so it's five years old as of now. And we thought that the drums would be okay because the brake pads had never been changed before. But we took it off and there were grooves in the brake drum and you cannot reuse those. You can either get them remilled or milled down. Uh, but by the time you look into doing that, you're probably better off just getting new bearings and all that stuff with it, which this drum is gonna come with. Um, another thing that's nice about this kit is that if you are doing all of that, you don't have to worry about the packing the bearings part or putting the seal in. Uh, a lot of people have trouble putting the seal in because it has to go in straight and it can't go in too deep and it can't be uh, too shallow. So having this kit done, um, Lipper makes sure they've got it done right for you, put in the box and all you have to do is slide it on when it gets to your house. We assembled this, uh, took off everything, all the old stuff off this axle and put all the new stuff on in about 10 to 15 minutes. And if you have to pack those bearings, that's probably gonna double your time to about 30 minutes, making the whole job on a tandem axle trailer about two hours long. Whereas if you get this kit, you can do the whole kit in about an hour, do every single one. Um, I know I did the one side on this trailer right in a row and it took me about 30 minutes. So having those pre-packed is gonna make sure that um, they're done correctly. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. But with that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to get them in place. To begin our installation, we need to start by removing our wheels and tires from our camper. You can see we've already got the rear one done and we're gonna walk you through uh, putting the front one on. Now, if you're doing this by hand with a wrench, um, you may want to do it with the tire on the ground. That'll help you to break these, these nuts loose, or you can use a impact. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can lift your uh, tire or lift your RV to get your tire up off the ground. Uh, we're using a set of jacks that we have, or a set of lifts that we have on the back end to lift it up. Um, but the best way to lift it is either by the frame or right underneath the spring perch where your spring is attached to your axle. You can use just a normal bottle jack, lift it up there and just do one at a time. I will take a flathead screwdriver and a mallet and we're gonna stick it 
back behind in this little groove here. Um, you definitely want a flathead screwdriver that has that comes to a point because you're going to have to drive it behind this lip. There we go. And you can see it just popped out a little bit. We'll rotate it and continue prying this cap out. You can use a softball mallet to, or a rubber mallet to kind of beat this way to pop it out, give you a little bit of a gap. But I do not recommend trying to um, knock it off all the way because you will dent the cap. These are very soft um, and more times than not I'll see a cap that's dented and that's probably why. Go, set that to the side. Usually these are going to be full of grease, um, but I think these hubs had just recently been greased. Take our flathead screwdriver, stick it behind this retention ring and just pry it out. Set that to the side because we'll be reusing that too, as well as this axle nut and the washer behind it. Grab our studs here, pull out, and your outer bearing is going to want to fall out. If you're not getting new drums, you'll want to clean this bearing up and reuse it, um, but we are going to get new drums and we'll show you why. Uh, we're definitely going to have to reuse this, uh, this washer. Now we can pull our drum off the rest of the way. So you can see here, before we take this old brake assembly off, we've actually got a, a little bit of a crack in our brake pad. Um, but for us, that's not the biggest of the issue. Our biggest issue is that this magnet is no longer flat. There's a big groove in the bottom. And you can see what caused that is all of this uneven wear in this brake drum. This is actually a valley that it's formed, and this is the highest point. So we're not going to be able to reuse these drums uh, because this has to be very, very flat, almost perfect um, for that magnet to grab onto fully. And that's why we were getting a poor, uh, poor braking performance out of these brakes. In addition to that, you can see all of this. This is all grease that has blown through this seal and all that brake dust is sticking to it. And that will also cause uh, the brakes to malfunction. Now we'll need to clean off the spindle. Any of this old grease, if it comes in contact with the new grease, your new grease is just about useless. It'll form a chemical reaction, the same as if you mix greases. Um, old grease is not good to mix with new grease. And at this time, um, it's good to check your spindle for any, uh, any scoring or any bluing. If your spindle looks like it's uh, got a blue tint to it, or a blue color to it, that means that your spindle has been overheated at some time and you probably need to replace your axle. But we'll get everything wiped off here so that it's nice and clean. Uh, these grooves are kind of hard to get cleaned out, but they're not as crucial as the spindle itself is. And yours might be seized up to the backing plate here. Let's give it a good pull. Pull it off and that'll expose the wires that we need to clip. We'll take our two wires. It does not matter. You don't have to keep track of them. Clip this one here, this one here, and then clip the hanger on the back. And take our old assembly out. And we'll take a wire strippers. We'll strip back both the ends of these wires. just to get them ready for our new brakes. We'll take two blue heat shrink butt connectors, slide them over our connections here. This will help make it a little bit easier once our brake assembly is in place. Get my tug, make sure they're not gonna come off. Now we can slide our new brake assembly on. Now when choosing your brakes for your setup, you'll want to uh, pick the appropriate sides. And you can think of it as um, the, from the driver's point of view. So if you're sitting in the driver's seat, 
the right side of your vehicle is going to be the right side brakes. Um, a lot of people think it's from looking at your rig from the front, but it's actually from looking behind or sitting in the driver's seat. And you'll want the right hand brakes will have this brake arm right here on the forward side. So you'll want it to be facing the front of the trailer. Our back one is the same. And then on the other side, it's actually a mirror image because we still want that arm to be on the front. So make sure you pick up the brakes for the appropriate size. Uh, what we do is we have these two wires on the back and we'll pull over to the side. You take our brake assembly, slide it over our studs, making sure our magnet is on the bottom. Slide it over. Now what's important here is there's actually a little bit of a lip here that you'll want that brake to sit over top of. Just like that. And we can take the new nuts that come in your kit, thread these on, and then we'll tighten and torque them to the specifications that come with your kit. Now we can take our wiring on the back of our brake assembly and get them connected to our butt connectors. And again, it does not matter which one these go to, they just need to go to one or the other. Now if you have easy lube axles, which is what we have, you'll have this grease circ fitting at the end. This is where the grease is gonna come out so you want to pump a little bit of grease in there to pump the old grease out. You can see that black grease coming out. And you want to pump it out until you start seeing red grease. One more shot. There we go. So we can stop there. We'll get some grease put on our spindle itself. Because you do not want to put on your new drums when they're dry. I'll just rub this around. Make sure to get a little bit on this upper ring because that's where our seal's gonna go and it helps get your seal in place. Now if you end up having to get new drums for your setup, um, I highly recommend these Lippert drums. Uh, what I really like about them is they come with the seal already pressed into the back. The inner bearing is already packed, flip it around. The outer bar bearing is already packed and everything is, is pre-greased. So all you have to do is take it and slide it up into place. Uh, be careful, this outer bearing almost always comes out if you don't hold it. But your priority here is making sure you get it pressed all the way on. There you go, just like that. And now we gotta get our outer bearing seated in there properly. And now we can start reassembling the washer, nut, and retainer. We'll take our washer. There's gonna be a little notch on it, or a little flat spot. There's a flat spot on the spindle too. Slide that over and take our nut and thread it in place. Now with the, the nut, Hand tight, what we'll want to do is we'll take a either a very large socket or a set of channel locks like we have here. We want to tighten it essentially as tight as you can get it. And this helps to seat it properly against the back. And then we'll back it off until we can loosen it with our hand again. And then tighten it finger tight. We'll take our retention ring and snap it in place. You may have to move this just ever so slightly in order to get this retention ring to clip on there. We'll take a grease gun and we'll want to pack this hub until you start seeing a little bit of grease come out of the edge. Once you see it start coming out, 
you just wanted to give it a couple extra pumps until it starts to round out around that nut and that's good enough we can take our cap here you just want to clean out this one was actually pretty clean usually these things are packed full of grease uh, that's why i think this this owner had just recently uh, re-greased their or repacked their bearings which is great um, but we've got them repacked for them we'll take this cap make sure it seats properly tap it in ever so slightly and we can take a soft blow hammer and just tap it in you just want to make sure to not damage this cap um, we've got this cap that's got an extra support here in the top so um, we can hit it a little bit harder but if your cap comes to a dome um, like over the top, you definitely want to use a board or something to put over the end to tap it on. Like I said, the insulation is not going to be difficult. Um, I do recommend that if you're replacing one, go ahead and replace the other one for the axle. You'll have to pick up two for each axle that you're doing. So we have a set of four here. Um, I would never replace just one drum at a time, regardless of the situation, because they need to age together so that you can keep track of you know, when each one of them was replaced. It's similar to leaf springs and brakes on a trailer. You don't want one side to have an advantage over the other because then all that's gonna do is ruin the other side faster. So um, just a little tip, definitely replace them in pairs and pick up however many you need. Um, but with all that being said, that's gonna do it for a look at and installation of the Lippert Hub and Drum Assembly.